So I'm Kelly and we're at Operator Research Center and recently we um, started a project where we're modifying some basic kerosene lamps to make them brighter and uh, less smoky. We were in contact with a student named Chishio Furukawa from Brown University and he uh, he heard about us through some mutual mutual friends and knew that we had some testing capabilities and was in the middle of this project where he wanted to find out about the, the health benefits and drawbacks of these lamps. Um, so he sent us a couple of these vernacular lamps. They're called Taduba lamps and they're from Uganda. Real basic design, just um, it's the bottom half of an aerosol can. Um, just cut it off, fill it with kerosene, you know, stick in this real simple generally a round wick but sometimes a flat wick and with a little you know a little basic kind of metal working put it all together and Shishio told us this is what kids study with in Uganda in their homes um, you know to do school work after dark you need to have some kind of light and if there's no electricity available this is what you got and I think that by lighting it, that'll show you the problem better than I can tell you about it. So you'll see that even with the wick really low, it's just, you know, it's shooting off just an incredible amount of smoke. Well, what I wanted to do, or at least the parameters I set for myself, is I wanted to try to make something that would make this burn quite a bit cleaner without uh, adding much in the way of cost or with coming up with something that was uh, perhaps too sophisticated for the, the, the manufacturers there in Africa as far as just accessing materials. So basic materials, if you look down here, I've got a hammer and some tin snips, the stuff that they already have access to when they're building these things. This is the little product that I came up with uh, and then I just added a reflector for the sake of um, directionality so you, the, the, the student could potentially not have to stare right at a flame while he's reading and I'm going to walk you through um, how you make one of these things. I, I went ahead and previously cut out this plate. Very very simple process. You kind of pick somewhere here in the middle. Uh, I'm assuming that they just looking at the lamps they probably don't have a lot of measuring tools. So I'm trying to do this by eye. Um, Slot head screwdriver uh, does the trick. What it does is it changes the shape of the, the wick into a more of a flat wick, which burns quite a bit cleaner. And as we move along, you can tweak this around a little bit to get that oval shape that I've created there um, in the proper uh, uh, shape and dimension. And you just physically with your hands, you can fold this guy over and square it up as best you can. This one didn't go as well as some do, but so be it. Uh, I put a Phillips head or any, any kind of a shaft that's roughly the same dimension as that tube that's coming up there, just a little larger up inside here. And then I found this lovely hammer opera that's perfect for this. It wouldn't have to be that. would obviously be quite a bit nicer than beating on a piece of wood, but um, as far as being able to control this metal a little bit. But essentially, when you do that, a lot of times what happens is just happens again is the original hole kind of gets choked shut. So you have to go in and kind of bring it back. And that's it. It's done. Now this one, I would have to work a little bit harder to make it fit perfectly. Um, I'm kind of for the sake of the video moving along. So what you do to make this thing work is you get the wick quite a bit higher than you'd ever really want it for the regular application, like so, so that you have some rip wick to work with. I've gone ahead and used the one that I made originally. You feed that wick up in there, you bring it down to about where the wick's right at the top. Kelly, if you want to light it, that'd be great. Yeah, you know. happy to. And then I'll just make the... 
I'd just like to add that the great thing about this um, this addition that Ed made is it gives you uh, the capability to control wick height while the lamp is lit, which is not, yeah. as far as we could tell, not something that you could do beforehand. Who put her out, sorry. Right. You know, and with any new technology, yeah. there's definitely a learning curve. But this is this is so simple and easy to use. It's, it's yeah, we'll just great. go with a wick height, or a flame height about like that for the sake of that. So you can see that smoke column's gone. The flame's quite a bit wider. Uh, and so I would think quite a bit brighter. And then I just added a little, and of course, again, this is just out of scrap material, a reflector to give it some directionality. So you can see that just making a few simple changes can make a big difference in flame brightness and in the smoke that's being emitted. We're in the process of quantifying, um, quantifying emissions from these lamps with Operbecho Research Center's portable emissions monitoring system. We're excited to find out um, exactly what the benefits are. And I'd just like to take the uh, opportunity to thank Operbecho Research Center and Kelly for giving me a chance to uh, work on this project and see if I could do something positive for this uh, lamp and for the people in Africa. Thank you.